Hello everyone, welcome back to Electronics Communication System. So again, I'm Ra'an and we will start our topic with the introduction to communication system. Just to start with, okay, let's move on to the next page. So here is the picture of Samuel Morse here. So in 1837, Samuel Morse Telegraph was considered as the start of practical electronic communication. It was not the first system to use electricity to send messages. Though not electronic, it had all the essential elements of the communication system. There was a transmitter, which consists of a telegraph key and a battery to convert information into an electrical signal. And then, it has a receiver, which is um, represented by the sounder that convert the electrical signal to a sound. And also, we have a channel, a transmission channel, which is considered by using the wire on the pole. So, to illustrate the history of electronic communication system, we have here a timeline of the electronic communication system history. First, in 1837, the telegraph of using Morse code was utilized. Then, in 1866, we have the first Atlantic telegraph cable. In 1876, there was an invention of telephone. In 1887, Marconi developed wireless. And in 1901, Marconi transmitted radio across Atlantic. In 1906, radio communication using the voice. In 1923, there was an invention of television. In 1948, there was a first electronic computer and transistor was invented. In 1966, uh, 1969 rather, the birth of internet. In 1971, the first micros microprocessor was developed. In 1986, we have the mobile telephone. In 1988, we have the World Wide Web. And with that, as some sort of history, we have been utilizing the benefits of the uh, technology that has been developed in the recent years. So, in this trying times of pandemic, so what can you see here? There is a tower yet with representing the communication system. So, in this trying times of pandemic, communication system play a vital role in how we associate with our family, friends, colleagues, and even in our classes today. So, this would not be possible if we don't have the electronic communication from uploading and downloading of our files here. It cannot be sent to you if we don't have the internet today. So, communication was one of the first application of electrical technology. So, after that, uh, after mentioning this uh, technology of communication, now we are going to discuss the elements of basic communication system. So, bear with me into, in the next uh, slides uh, for discuss discussing the elements of basic communication system so we have here the outline for our topic so we have the elements of communication system the time and frequency domain so our learning objectives is to introduce the principle of communication system first we will be learning about the elements of communication system second learn about the time and frequency domain 
So, any communication system moves information from a source to a destination through a channel. Figure 2 illustrates this very simple idea. The information from the source will generally not be informed that can travel through a channel directly. So, a transmitter will be employed and on the other end is the receiver. So, the source of information or the information signal can be of analog or digital. Sources are often in are often described in terms of frequency range that they occupy. So, telephone quality analog signal voice, for instance, contain a frequency contain a frequency range. Okay. From okay, let me write it here. From three hundred. 300 hertz to 3 kilohertz that is for uh, telephone quality analog voice signal while for analog fidelity music it needs a frequency range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz Video requires a much larger frequency analog video television broadcast. It needs a frequency range from DC to output 4.2 MHz. While digital signals can have almost any bandwidth depending on the number of bits transmitted per second. So let me clear First, is a channel. A channel can be almost anything. It can be a pair of can be a pair of conductors. It can be an optical fiber, and also it can be a free space. So, most of the time, in our example and exercises, we will be considering this free space as a channel. So, sometimes a channel can carry the information signal directly. For example, an audio signal can be carried directly by a twisted pair telephone cable. So, on the other hand, a radio link is used in free space. So, na yung mga radios, yeah, free space then the ring. But, an antenna is used of innermost length would be required, and it is impossible to transmit without interference. So, parehan yung natay mga buki dere. Modigit should na ang signal. So, na interference mahitabo. With that interference na mga distortion, na possibility nga dili makaabot sa atong receiver. So, with that, in such, in such a situation, a require of carrier signal whose frequency will travel or propagate through the channel. This carrier signal will be altered or propagate uh, or modulate by the information signal in such a way it can be recovered at the destination. So, kinisha necessary or vital kaayo ang carrier signal. Kikini mo oy i altered or immodulate by the information signal para ang signal makaabot sa receiver. So, when a carrier, carrier signal is used, information signal or modulate are also known as modulating signal. So, these three terms, information signal, modulating signal, and baseband signals, are equivalent in communication scheme involving modulated carriers. So, so they they are just equivalent. So, they, these terms or these terminologies are equal when we use modulated carriers. Okay? Carrier is generated at a frequency much higher than the highest baseband frequency. Usually, the carrier is a sine wave 
and the instantaneous amplitude of the baseband signal is used to vary some of the parameter of the carrier. So, radians per second in mathematics, in mathematics dealing with modulation makes the equation simpler. So, of course, frequency is given in hertz. So, just recall so basic AC theory uh, to convert uh, frequency to radian. So, we have the formula formula omega is equal to 2 2 pi f okay so the modulation is done in the transmitter and inverse is called the modulation it takes place at the receiver to restore the original signal so a general equation for sine wave carrier is this one this equation so we have e as a function of t is equal to e sub c sine omega c t plus theta so where we have this following definition e as a function of t is the instantaneous voltage as a function of time e sub c the peak voltage omega c frequency in radians per second so if you are given the frequency in hertz just convert that into first into radians then p as a function of time in second t is equal to time in seconds rather and then theta the phase angles in radians so the end modulated carrier so the end modulated sine wave carrier exists only at one frequency so single sine wave exists only at one frequency so it has a zero bandwidth however for modulated modulated carrier double r so for a modulated signal it is no longer a single sine wave and it therefore occupies a greater bandwidth exactly how much bandwidth is needed depends on the baseband frequency range so a Hartley's law here is the general rule that relates the bandwidth and information capacity it states that the amount of information that can be transmitted in a given time is proportional to the bandwidth for the modulation scheme. So again, so we have this Hartley's law uh, equation or formula where I is the amount of information to be sent and K is the constant that depends on the type of modulation and T is the time available and B is the channel bandwidth. One of the benefits of using modulated carriers, even with the channels that are capable of carrying baseband signals, is that several carriers can be used at different frequency. Each can be separated with a different information signal and filter at the receiver. So we have the term here, multiplexing. Multiplexing is the act of combining two or more information signals. And we have also here the frequency division multiplexing. So when available frequency range is divided among the signal. So one of the vivid example in everyday life is the radio and television broadcasting. So we have here an example of frequency division multiplexing. In which the available spectrum is divided among many signals. So there are limitations to the number of signals that can be crowded into a given frequency range because each requires a certain bandwidth. For example, a television channel occupies a bandwidth of 6 MHz. So here is the example or the frequency division multiplexing uh, in the very high frequency television band. So for example, we have here 
channel 2 channel okay channel 2 so channel 2 occupies a frequency range from 54 to 60 so it occupies a 6 megahertz bandwidth so that is a by uh, basic requirement for a television band a television channel okay alternative method for using single communication channel to send many signal is called time division multiplexing so instead of dividing the available bandwidth of the channel among many signal the entire bandwidth is used for each signal, but only for a small part of time. So, a non-electronic example of that is the total available time on a television channel among the various programs transmitted. Each program uses the whole bandwidth of the channel, but only part of the time. So, examples of time division multiplexing in electronic communication are not common as frequency division multiplexing but time division multiplexing is used extensively especially with digital communication the digital telephone system is a good example digital digital telephone system Okay, let us move on with the frequency band. So, a system of labeling frequency came into use. So, here in the table or graph. So, it is, the, it is um, categorized in frequency with their corresponding wavelength and their sample uses. So, just followed here. So, for example, we have 30 to 300, 300 Hz, it is considered as extremely low frequency. And for voice frequency, we have 300 to 3 kilohertz, and so on and so forth. So, just be guided. And for example, we have for this application from... Um, 3, 3 gigahertz to uh, 30 gigahertz so we have their sample uses it is used in radar communication satellites microwave ovens personal communication system cellular telephones so you can see we can categorize the frequency with their corresponding wavelength and to their uses so just try to refer it back and forth if we use to if we use it in later if we use it later so radio waves uh, also can be described according to their wavelengths which is the distance travel distance wave travels in one period so the general equation the general equation that relates frequency to wavelength for any wave is v is equal to f times lambda where v is the velocity of the wave in meters per second frequency f is equal to the frequency of the wave in hertz lambda in wavelength in meters so for a radio wave in free space as i've said we were going to for, for most of the example and exercises uh, unless stated most of the time uh, we are going to use free space as a channel so for for a radio wave in free space the velocity is the same as that light which is approximately uh, 300 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second let me write i have not write meters per second meters per second so C is equal to the speed of light, F frequency of wave in hertz, lambda wavelength in meters. So let us solve some example. 
So, first example, calculate the wavelength in free space corresponding of a frequency of 1 MHz. So, recall the formula solution. Recall the formula C is equal to, what is it? F times lambda. So, calculate the wavelength in free space of the corresponding frequency. So, wavelength. So, lambda is equal to C over F. So, what is our C? It is equal to 300 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second, which is the velocity of the light. And what is the frequency? Our frequency is 1 megahertz. So, what is our wavelength? Our wavelength is equal to 300 times 10 to the power of 6 over 1 megahertz. So, we have 300 meters. So, 1 megahertz or 1 times 10 to the power of 6, 1 over second. So, hertz is equal to 1 over second. Then, time, because hertz is equal to 1 over second, so this will cancel out. So, what we have left is 300 meters. So, the wavelength for the corresponding frequency of 1 megahertz for AM radio broadcast band is 300 meter. So, for B and C, it is your assignment to solve it. Okay? So, try and solve those uh, wavelength for their corresponding frequency. For B, we have 27 megahertz for CB radio band and C, 4 gigahertz for satellite television. Any other changes in the baseband signal reflect a distortion. So it corrupts the signal. So uh, there are many possible types of distortion. And listed here are some of the typical example of distortion. First, we have the harmonic distortion. Harmonic distortion are harmonics or multiples of the baseband components that are added, that are added on the original signal. And we have intermodulation distortion. There are, they are the additional frequency components generated by combining the frequency components in the original. And we have here also nonlinear frequency response, which uh, which baseband components are amplified more than the others and we have nonlinear phase response it is a phase shift between components of the signal and we have noise both the transmitter and the receiver add noise and the channel is also noisy this noise adds to the signal and mass it noise will be discussed later in the next uh, class probably in the next chapter and we also have interference interference if more than one signal uses the same transmission medium the signals may interact with each other so one of the advantages of digital communication is the ability to regenerate a signal that has been corrupted by noise and distortion so, in analog system, however, noise and distortion tend to accumulate. So, in some cases, distortion can be removed at later points if the frequency response of a channel is not flat but is known. For instance, equalization the form of filters can be used to compensate. However, harmonic distortion, intermodulation, and noise once present are impossible to remove completely from analog signal. So, a certain amount of immunity can be built into digital scheme, but excessive noise and distortion levels will be reflected in increased error rates.